Alright, Mr. Webb, so when we realized that there was going to be a new Spider-Man movie, there were a lot of people wondering, really, like, should there be a new one? And then you got attacked. So you were like, oh, okay, okay, I see. Some were really, some were really refreshing. I mean, at least I was. So I was wondering, you know, you know, how did you feel when they first offered you to reboot a movie with a lot of pressure on it? I mean, the last movie came out five years ago. <laughs> You were fresh off Fighters in Summer, which is a completely different movie. It was terrifying and it was exciting. And, and um, those feelings often go hand in hand, don't they? And, and um, you know, listen, the kid in me was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? You've got to do this. And that, that little kid went out. Nice. And are you going to do more action movies in the future? Or I is hope so. I love action. I mean, I, I, I love, I love Spider-Man. I love the universe. I love Andrew and Emma. It's been a real... No, I didn't even meet you. I watched you on the monitors. So when you first take yeah, on this project, do you sort of look at the tropes and the elements, the control elements of the story, sure. and decide what you're going to do and how you're going to bring your own voice to it? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I went back and dug through all my Spider-Man comic books, and, and I really was it was really about finding. Peter Parker and, and how I interpret it and, and, and how I remember it and what I loved about Peter Parker. And when I was thinking about the character, I went back to the moment where I kept on returning to this moment where Peter Parker was left behind by his parents. And I felt like that was where not only the narrative emerged from, where the story emerged from, but it's where the texture of the character came from. He's an orphan. And he distrusts authority. And that sarcastic wit that I love from the comics, that comes from him not trusting the world around him and a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. And I love that component of that quality. You know? I talked to Alex Kurtzman the other day. Yes. And he talked about striking the balance between uh -huh. the sort of darker, more gritty tones in the post Nolan comic book universe. How did you do that in this film? Well, I mean, casting is really a big part of that and, and trying to ground the action and trying to... Um, put the characters in a situation that feel a little bit more realistic emotionally and then let what happens happen. How about the action? What's your favorite action sequence that you think is going to blow everybody's mind? I, there's two action sequences that I particularly love. I mean, there's the scene called the crane sequence, which is deep in the movie, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's sort of an aria of swinging that I love. And then there's a scene on the bridge when, and, and, and where Peter is, you know, confronting the lizard for the first time, and, and I... I think there's an emotional quality to that scene, and Peter is very different at the beginning of the scene than he is at the end of the scene. And that is what I love about certain action scenes. There's peril, there's danger, there's flames, there's a lizard throwing cars off a bridge, but there's a beating heart at the center of it, and, 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 and it's a scene like any other scene.